At a campsite near Lake Okabogie, a family of three are sleeping. Suddenly, the RV starts to shake and a bright light shines outside. We learn that the daughter has vanished. What happened to the girl? Post your comments and your assumptions before continuing the story. Okay, let's go. We see Scully talking to her chief in the FBI. He informs her about a 302 that he has received from Mulder. He informs her that the unexplained 302 is petitioning the FBI to assign the case number to a tabloid headline which reads, Teen Taken from Tent by Aliens. He then proceeds to show Scully the X-File case, which concerns the disappearance of Mulder's younger sister, Samantha, many years ago. Scully knows about this as Mulder lost his sister and was not able to save her. He describes that there was a bright light outside before he felt some kind of presence in the room, and just moments later, his sister was gone. They were never able to solve this case. The chief believes this to be the reason for Mulder's obsession with the case in hand, and this could even cloud his judgment. He decides to disallow the 302, but Scully convinces him to let her talk to Mulder first. Scully meets Mulder in his office, where he is indulged in some interesting investigation. She then mentions about the case that the chief told her, and expresses her disbelief that this case is related to aliens. Mulder then suspects that she has never been to Lake Okabogie, which is apparently a famous UFO hotspot, which is where the disappearance has occurred. He also tells her about one of the four UFO sightings that was witnessed by several Girl Scouts and their den mother. One of the girls was Darlene Morris, which is the mother of the girl who has gone missing. He assumes that there is a connection between them and they set off to investigate. In Iowa, the agents arrive at the Morris residence. Darlene welcomes them in and tries introducing them to her younger son, Kevin, but they get ignored as he continues scribbling on the paper. As Mulder looks at the family photos, it is evident that Mulder feels personally connected to the case as he touches the childhood picture of Ruby, as if it was his sister. Darlene recounts the event to the agents and claims how Kevin has been so traumatized that he has stopped talking. Scully questions her if her ex-husband could have taken Ruby, but Darlene says that she has no reason for suspecting that as she knows what happened. The aliens have taken her daughter away. While Scully doesn't believe this theory, Mulder remarks that he does and Darlene feels a sense of relief. Mulder then tries to talk to Kevin, but gets ignored by him as he continues to watch the static on the TV while scribbling binary numbers on the paper. Mulder then asks him what that is, so Kevin remarks that it is coming from the TV, even though there is nothing unusual there. At the police station, Mulder faxes Kevin's binary scribbling to the FBI cryptography section and promised the man named Danny tickets to the Redskins game for attempting to decipher the code. As they talk to the town sheriff, they get informed that Darlene has been telling stories of the UFOs since first grade, which everyone thinks is her imagination, and they blame the last incident on her overactive imagination. He also mentions that Ruby was a spoiled teenager and it was just a matter of time before something horrible happened to her. So they just dismiss this case as a runaway case considering Ruby's reckless behavior. As they get back to their car after this disappointing conversation, they find a note asking them to follow her. They follow the girl to a library where she secretly tells them about Ruby's affair with Greg Randall a reckless bartender at a pub. She also reveals that Ruby was pregnant, so they had decided to run away that night. The agents then visit the Pennsylvania pub where Greg was working. They talk to the bartender and learn that Greg has not shown up to work for the last three weeks and has been fired now. Mulder notices a UFO tattoo on the man's arm and asks him about it, making it as though he doesn't believe in such things. The man then suggests Mulder to visit Lake Okabogie, which will change his perspective forever, and then proceeds to show him his melted ear, which was apparently caused by a killer sunburn at night on the lake. 
The next morning, some NSA agents burst into Scully's hotel room, demanding to talk to Mulder. They question him about where he got those binary digits from. Mulder denies any answer unless he is told what it means. The agents then reveal that it is a defense satellite transmission and demand to know where he got it from. Mulder refuses to tell them, but they soon gather the information from Scully and leave. At the Morris's residence, the NSA take away all of Kevin's possessions and arrest both mother and son, while the agents can only watch. The agents get inside and witness that the NSA has found more such binary coded pages and decide that they have succeeded in their motive before leaving. Mulder then notices the family RV parked outside the house and goes to collect the samples of a burned kind of substance from the roof. They later visit the FBI office in hopes to learn about those pages of binary code that the NSA have obtained from Kevin. The agent remarks that the codes included several random things like Da Vinci's Universal Man, DNA double helix animation, and some segments of music, as well as lines from a Shakespearean sonnet. Mulder remarks that this is like changing channels rapidly. He then theorizes that the fragmented nature of the data they have deciphered is implying time division multiplexing which is a way of sending multiple messages to multiple destinations through a single transmission. Darlene and Kevin are released from questioning and meet the agents on their way out. Darlene is mad at what happened and refuses to talk to Mulder as he tries to explain himself. She says she only wants her daughter back and nothing more and doesn't allow them to speak to Kevin. Mulder believes that Kevin was touched by the thing that took Ruby that night, and now he is receiving transmission messages. He believes him to be the answer. They visit the lake to look for any kind of evidence, and Mulder finds that some sand has converted to glass, which is only possible in extreme heat of 2,500 degree Fahrenheit. They also notice that a line of trees near the lake have been singed by the extreme heat. Scully notices a wolf, and they both follow it to a body in the woods. The police investigate the body and find it to be Greg Randall. Mulder finds a note in his wallet that has a doctor's appointment written on it. They compare the handwriting to the note that the girl from the library had given them, and it matches perfectly. The sheriff also finds out that she was the one who had the appointment with the doctor for her pregnancy. The girl... Tessa is now called for investigation, and it is revealed that she was the one who was pregnant with Greg, not Ruby. It was those two who had planned to run away together, leaving Ruby behind. Mulder makes her confess that she killed Greg, but Ruby was not with them that night. Scully then tries to convince Mulder that they already have one confession for the crime and a suspect with clear intentions so they should hand the case to the law enforcement and close the X-File. But Mulder is convinced that Tess didn't kill Ruby and says that he will not give up until they find Ruby's body. Scully then asks him to stop making it about his sister, but Mulder is adamant about questioning Kevin again, no matter if Scully comes along or not. They soon get to the Morrison house, but find it empty, with several sheets with binary numbers scribbled on the floor. Scully goes to check upstairs, but as she looks down, she is astonished to find the numbers creating the image of Ruby. They then head to the campsite near the lake and soon find the abandoned RV owned by Darlene. They follow a trail inside the forest and end up finding an out-of-breath Darlene who says that she couldn't catch up with Kevin who ran deeper into the forest. Scully stays behind as Mulder continues to look for Kevin. He reaches a clearing and finds Kevin walking towards a bright light while ignoring Mulder's calls. The bright light soon turns out to be the headlights from several bikers riding through the forest. Mulder saves Kevin from getting hit, but Kevin says that Ruby is back. Just then, Scully screams out for Mulder, so the two run back where they left Darlene. They reach Scully and find her giving CPR to an unconscious Ruby. At the hospital, Mulder hopefully approaches Ruby to ask about where she was, but she says that they told her not to tell anyone. 
Mulder tries to convince her to tell the truth, but Darlene arrives and refuses any further questions. She says that she only wanted her daughter back, so now they can leave. Mulder pleads that she should let her daughter acknowledge the truth, but Darlene remarks how the truth never helped her and only made her an outcast as no one believed her. She closes the door in their faces and Mulder is disheartened by this and leaves. Back at the headquarters in Washington, Scully hears Mulder's hypnotic records where he describes the night his sister was lost. He describes a voice in his head that tells him not to be afraid and that she will return and he wants to believe that voice. Later, we see Mulder crying in a church while holding his sister's photo. This was an emotional one and we want to know what you think in the comments below. If you'd like to watch more on Movie Shortens, please subscribe to the channel to get notified about when our next video is posted. As always, thanks for watching.